We worked on a project for Four Seasons Resort called Dubai Festival City where we looked at some uh, semblance of pieces from uh, the stone material that's in the area, the, uh, the rock that's from that area, trying to anchor this into a little bit more of a permanent context. And in Dubai Financial Center, what we did here was a uh, entry element with some LED boards. This is the uh, stock exchange for Dubai and a visitor center, uh, subterranean visitor center. And currently we're working on a project called Jumeirah Golf Estates. And this again, in this case, this is where the architectural education comes in handy in terms of setting an architectural vernacular and tone for the, uh, for the property, for the golf resort, for the buildings, for the housing. And then beginning to design the, the wayfinding and the graphics. And then changing scales again, uh, we, we were given the opportunity to design a half mile stretch of uh, the airport highway at uh, Birmingham Airport. And what we did was we, uh, with the landscape architects, we moved the, we moved the uh, rental car units about 50 feet behind a curb, set up a berm, and then did a very simple landscape of uh, shrubbery that is akin to a cloud formation, for example, and then designed a series of these chevron forms uh, that are in different stages of flight. And in this case, one of the things that, I again, that we wind up doing, just as architects wind up doing more than uh, you purely as an industrial designer may do, is we collaborate with a series of, of other professionals. We work with lighting designers. We work with, in this case, a structural engineer to design the universal joint. We work with a, a landscape architect and we may work with a civil engineer in the road and berm, berms that are designed in here. So there's a variety of people that we wind up managing during, managing or collaborating with during that process. Uh, another portion of the uh, work that we wind up doing, there's really two parts of the work that we do. One, one part is exhibits and environments that we design, and the second part is signage and wayfinding programs. This, is a, uh, this gives you a chronology of how a wayfinding program would work for uh, North Carolina State University, and it allows you to see kind of the level of sketching and studies that we would wind up doing on a project like that. From the approaches to the uh, directional information that you would have at this campus to one of the things that we wind up doing is we try to, in any project that we wind up doing, we get as much information as we can so we can gel it down to its basic essentials. In this case, when we had uh, received this uh, project, there were, I believe, 15 different districts in this, uh, in this campus, some of them non-contiguous. So one of the things we did was we turned it into five different districts rather than having so many that's so difficult to remember. And anytime we get into projects that are very complex, we try to gel them down to basic information because it, it just gets too hard to remember either the story, the navigation, and then these are uh, early sketches of the, uh, uh, of the uh, entry features, some of the historical gates that we uh, designed the signage for. And then the system of signs, that would be directional signs, identification signs, using the campus colors, all the way down to building identification signs. And then this is a set of documents. We do, um, we do a series of uh, uh, construction drawings. They're not uh, with engineering, but they're pretty close to having uh, a lot of detail. Typography colors. Uh, in this case, uh, we'll go back to the education and industrial design and looking at how a kit of parts might be used. So they could have, in this case, there, there may be hundreds of these produced, there's not millions of them, but you, you want to look at a certain point where they can utilize these pieces for a variety of different sign types. So we developed this kit of parts for that reason. These are some of the details. And then this is a, a detail of, of a trade show booth that we did earlier this year. This is a visitor center for a headquarters at Georgia Pacific in Denver. 
and one of the things that we were asked to do here is to showcase the 5,000 products that the distribution division, which deals with uh, construction products, what are their products. This entire hall is about 100,000 square feet. So what we did was we did an elevated stage in the middle of the, uh, of the room that people in this side of the room could look at and people on the other side of the room could look at. The concept was that uh, these salespeople that sell these products would be immersed in those products. In the past, the salespeople were part of a uh, warehouse where they saw and breathed and lived these products. So, but what we wanted to do is to animate the, the product construct as a, um, as a series of um, uh, stories. And these stories were a timeline of the um, uh, evolution of their various products. We used the uh, tape measure to be an analogy for this. Uh, distribution hub where these products are from and who, what clients use these. In this case the entire exhibit was built of, uh, of the Georgia Pacific products. We used all their products uh, except for possibly the steel plates that hold these pieces up. Uh, this is a showroom for Nea, uh, Hayworth which is the um, uh, second largest contract furniture manufacturer. Uh, in this case <coughs> I want to speak of of uh, graphic design and how graphic design could influence an environment through color, through additive uh, uh, color elements that could be uh, affect a change in the space. In this case, uh, we used three, three basic colors that you wind up seeing here. We used carpeting as a way to lock pieces in. We used uh, color to describe the various product categories. And then this is the main feature element in the entrance that had interactive in it. So we want uh, interactive being a computer uh, generated film. Uh, we, want, we may wind up collaborating with people in, the, in our exhibit area that deal with, um, that deal with um, interactive media, that deal with computer, that deal with uh, off-site w uh, web that might be used in further communication of this narrative or this story. Uh, this is a visitor center for a, um, a missionary organization in Orlando, and this gives you a feeling of, um, of the space and how you walk through this space. Lighting, um, sound, sound attenuation, sound uh, quality is important as, as to what we do here. Uh, in this case, uh, interactive media used as a gaming element in the middle of this space. One of the things that we look at in, in, in these spaces, if they become, if they are more public spaces as opposed to the corporate one that I showed earlier, we may wind up engaging uh, an environment that has, a, uh, for example, in this case, we had stations that were for children that would be more puzzle-like. We had stations for teens that would be more gaming-like. We had uh, touchy-feely boxes that might be for very young kids and we also had uh, deeper uh, content that you could get to as an adult if you chose to uh, go through the uh, interactive media.